I'll walk on down in there and it's kind of rough. We'll look for some black gum trees and we'll see if we can't find any roots. And how are the roots used in medicine? All different ways. The roots on it, you can either cut it into short pieces and stick it in your mouth and chew on them, get the sap out of them, or you can soak them in water and drink it after it's soaked, or you can boil it. You can boil the sap out and then mix it with water. More concentrated, you know. This is a black gum tree right here, and it looks like any other little tree. Here's a black gum tree, that one there, and there's one right there. How do you know this is like, what are some of the identifying marks? Usually it's the limbs, they're real smooth. The limbs on the black gum tree, they're real smooth, but it's pretty well identifiable in, in summertime because it's got them leaves, red leaves, yeah. you know, and everything. These small ones, you can find roots running away from the tree. I usually dig around around it, and if you find a root running away from the tree, that's what you want. And what could it help with? It, it, we mix it with aloe and stuff like that to, for like melanoma cancer on skin cancer and cuts and bruises and stuff like that. Wasp stings, right down to spider bites. See this root right here coming out of the ground? Yeah. Yeah. Dig it up. It just keeps it going. Sometimes you get some up to 12 foot long. So this is, it's kind of almost like an orange color? Yeah. Uh -huh. We're looking for some black root. They call it, it's wild center what it is. We call it black root in Cherokee. They'll have black pods on it, seed pods. And what we'll do, we'll just dig around it. Sometimes the ground's a little bit hard and get away from it a little bit. A lot of times you gotta go in after it. This is a good one here. There's the main part right here. It's got a nutty smell to it. And, okay. and usually the seeds will fall all over and in a couple of years there'll be more plants all over this place. So how long has medicine been in your family? Shoot, ever since I could remember. Yeah, yeah Grandpa, he dug medicine all the time for people or for ourselves, you know. It's just one of the traditions of the Cherokees, you know. They, a lot of them, they know quite a bit about medicine and roots and herbs. They just go out and dig their own, you know. Why do you think it's important to share with everybody, even outside your family and, and friends? Well, a lot of them are skeptics on stuff like that, and they don't believe in it, so I don't bother with it, you know, on their, on their part. But I try to share all I can, anybody that wants to listen, you know. But if they don't want to listen, forget it, you know. You, you ain't going to convince them anyway, so. Do you think that everything our bodies need can be found in nature? I think so, yeah. And if body's taken care of, right, fed right and everything, it'll take care of itself. Yeah, I don't care if it was cold wintertime, if somebody needed it, I'd be down here digging it, you know. Yeah. Or hot summertime, I'd be down here digging it. Is it nice knowing that you have the ability to, and the knowledge that can help people? Well, it, in a way, yeah, and in a way, you know, they want medicine, they want you to do it overnight, you know. If something takes 20 years in developing, then they want you to cure him overnight, you know. But it's hard to convince people how it's supposed to work, you know. 
Because it takes time. It takes time to get rid of something that's growed on you for a long time, you know. And then some of them will say, well, I didn't like the taste, so I didn't take it. You know. I told them you don't get nothing else. I said, that's it. <laughs> okay. These you can just hold on to them. Get the dirt off of them and clean them up real good. Uh, we need to cut it up. We'll take it inside though. I usually cut it in just about three inch lengths. I usually try to trim it a little bit. Make a little neat, neater paws anyway. So usually a serving size in a glass would be something about like that right there. Just a, just a little handful. Get your bottle of water and drink it down a little bit where you can put several sticks in there. The more you put in there, the stronger it's gonna get. Okay. And so when it turns that color, that orange color, and you can start drinking it next day even. Just drink it down and, and if you're gonna make lotion, you boil it. We'll boil it like we're doing there mm -hmm. and we're gonna concentrate it okay. pretty, pretty strong because we're gonna mix it half and half with aloe. Okay. Yeah, we'll boil this, this paw right here. So we'll just go ahead and put it in the water now. We'll just go ahead and put it in the, which is already warm. And then how long does it need to boil? It'll turn color. You just go by the color, it'll turn real dark color. And tell me again how much water? Usually two quarts, about half a gallon or a little more, you know. You keep boiling it and it'll boil itself down quite a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Get stronger and stronger, and you want you want it pretty strong in that lotion because you're mi mixing it half and half yeah. with aloe. Or after you boil it, take that liquid before you put aloe on it. Mm -hmm. You can take it and wash wounds out with it, you know, mm -hmm. before you even mix aloe with it because mm -hmm. it's real strong, you know. Black root can that be found in a lot more places? I imagine it's more. You can find it better back east. Yeah. But around here it's pretty pretty scarce. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to find. But when we was at Gettysburg, it was all over like like their nuisance weeds, you know, in the field, yeah. you know. And I told her thousands of them died of gangrene right there at Gettysburg, you know. Their legs getting cut off, and then gangrene set in. And yeah. I said they had medicine all around them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told her they must not had a Cherokee fighting with them <laughs> back then. <laughs> <laughs> Takes quite a while to mix that. Yeah, you can soak wounds, you know, soak the scab with this. Put it on real thick. The scab will fall off, and then you can rub it on the bare, the bare scar, then, you know, and it'll start healing it up. So that scab keeps a lot of stuff, even medicine, away from the scar. That's what the scab's for, to keep stuff away from the scar so it'll heal, you know. So if you get the scab off of there, loosen it up with this, and then get this right on the scar, on the flesh part, you know, and it'll heal up right quick like. There's two of them. And that's how much we had left. We'll bottle that up and put it in the fridge so we can use, make some more later on, you know. Mm -hmm. and could you take like a t tablespoon of that in your water? Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Like a glass yep. of water? Like you that? can drink this one like it is. Put about a tablespoon full in a glass of water like that and drink it. 
It's even good for sore muscles. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. If you've got sore muscles, rub that on there and let it go in. See that black, it, it's got a numbing agent to it. And it'll... <laughs> it does everything. Yeah.